Hello and welcome to No Spin. I'm Nidhi Razdan. The Ram Mandir is done, Article 370 is done, and now the BJP has one more big ticket ideological item on its agenda a uniform civil code. The ruling party has just announced that it will bring in a uniform civil code if it's voted back to power in Himachal Pradesh, where elections will be held later this week on the 12th of November. They've also made a similar pledge in Gujarat. The opposition has called this a gimmick to shore up votes of the Hindu majority because a civil code is widely believed to be the domain of the centre rather than a state. Which brings us to the question, is the BJP therefore testing the waters ahead of 2024's general election? At the heart of this debate is whether a country as diverse as India should have a uniform code with regard to personal laws like marriage, divorce and inheritance. Those who argue in favour of a UCC, as it's called, say that different religious codes make it an uneven playing field for women in particular. But others point out that the realities are more complex. For example, even under current Hindu, Muslim or Christian civil laws, there is no uniformity. And even within communities, there are many, many divergences. Well, joining us first on the program tonight is AIMIM Chief and Member of Parliament, Asaduddin Owesi. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Owesi. You've obviously seen the uh, Uniform Civil Code being proposed aggressively now by the BJP in Himachal and Gujarat. Do you see it as a trial balloon for 2024? Well, uh, I am of the opinion that yes, that BJP is experimenting uh, uh, at, 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 at the state level. But the issue is that this the biggest issue for BJP is to cover up their misgovernance, their mistakes, which have destroyed the livelihood of poor people of Gujarat and Himachal and wherever the state's uh, elections are going to take place. Now, if you talk about uniform civil court in Himachal Pradesh, will Mr. Amit Shah be able to buy a land in Himachal Pradesh? He will not be able to buy land in Himachal Pradesh, especially agricultural land because of Section 118 of the Tenancy Act. That is simple as that. So why is, why is BJP fooling? When the Home Minister of India cannot buy land in Himachal Pradesh, especially agricultural land because of Section 118. Secondly, about Uniform Civil Court uh, proposal in Gujarat. You see the travesty over here that in Gujarat, no one can change the religion unless until permission is given by the government. What sort of uniform civil code are talking about? Thirdly, what will happen to the Adivasi culture in Gujarat, the tribal culture? Are you going to overtake it? Are you going to completely finish it off? No, you cannot do it. Because in, 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 in we have given constitutional protection to tribals. Fourthly, you talk about a uniform civil court. Why is it that only uh, the tax rebate are given under Hindu and divided family to Hindus? Why not to Muslims and Christians? Isn't that the violation of right to equality in our constitution? Fifth point, they talk of, BJP talks about uniform civil court. Is that the only directive principle of the constitution? What about Article 39, which talks about equal distribution of wealth? The 60-70% of the wealth of this country is controlled by 8 to 10 families. Right. So this is a very uh, uh, clear-cut device. Uh, to forward their agenda and in the process they want to ensure that the Muslim identity is forever destroyed in India in the name of Uniform Civil Code. That will not happen well, because Article 29 well, is Saab, the right those, to culture, which those, is an unfettered right. Right, but those no in favor right. Article those, 29. Those in favor of a Uniform Civil Code say that we are con we are one country, so there should be one law. And that also uh, a uniform civil code would benefit women the most rather than subjecting them to arbitrary religious laws. What would you say about that on merit alone? Well, that is why we have uh, Juvenile Justice Act. That is why we have uh, the Hindu Marriage Act. That is why we have the Indian Succession Act. People who don't want to follow religious laws, they are free to follow all these laws. Who's stopping them? And, and, and when you talk about laws, from 2000 to 2019, you know, 90 lakh girls are missing in the name of female infanticide. Who's responsible? The, we, have, we have laws over there in, in, in a population as large as Uttarakhand. Uh, who's responsible for that? And, and then in Gujarat, the, 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 the girl-child ratio, uh, let the BJP say what is the girl-child ratio as compared to 1,000 boys. Which is better, the Muslims or, or, or of the uh, Hindu community? BJP has no answer to it. You know, these are the answers that, and, 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 and you talk about gender issue. Why did BJP release the, uh, the, the rapist of, of, uh, of Bilkis Banu and killer of her uh, three-year-old daughter and her, and her mother? 
so this is completely this is completely wrong argument you you have laws which are there use it who's stopping you from that and this argument of one nation one law you know why do we have concurrent list why do we have state list uh, why do we have union list and and why is it that every state government can can amend ipc crpc you, bjp says no one nation one law can a gujarati uh, or, or a person from himachal, himachal pradesh go to lakshwadeep and arunachal pradesh you're taking permission no because you have the laws are different over there for, to, to to visit over there fair enough mr oasi finally though isn't the uniform civil code in actually an unfinished ideological agenda of the bjp like the ram mandir like article 370 and therefore more than just a distraction from their misgovernance as you put it so it is both now for example if i ask a bjp person okay you talk about uniform civil code in ucc will it be the daya bhaga school of thought or the mitakshita school of thought please tell us will you be will you be will you making a lot to give Uh, an agriculture uh, land uh, agriculture land to, to to a hindu girl or you will say no kanya dan is over nothing doing bjp has no answer to this uh, you know you, you know what about having complete prohibition in the country complete prohibition in, in the country that is also part of directive principle you know you that is the biggest cause of accidents leading to deaths uh, lakhs of people die uh, because uh, someone was drunk and killed lakhs of women are being tortured because a drunk person uh, harms a woman so there are so many directive principle in the constitution which bjp does not wants to talk about and please remember article 44 says the state shall endeavor and that is why baba saheb ambedkar said that it should be voluntary not mandatory All right, Asad Adin Oweisi. Thanks very much for joining us, and let's go straight across to our panelists this evening. Uh, uh, Advocate of the Supreme Court, Shadan Farasat, is with us. Ranjana Kumari, social activist and writer. Tehsin Punawala, PKD Nambiar, also with us, and senior journalist Ashutosh, also joining us today. Uh, let me take this question to you first, Shadan Farasat, because just in terms of law, uh, what is what does it actually mean to say we'll have a uniform civil code implemented in a state like Gujarat or Himachal? Does it actually I mean can you actually do that is this not something that's more uh, in the domain of the center uh, and b uh, the law commission actually uh, you know had given a report to the modi government in 2018 where it was against the idea of a ucc it said that um, it's not necessary nor desirable a unified nation did not necessarily need uniformity interesting that the law commission said that Yes that's correct so a although there are matters of family law will uh, you know uh, entitle states also to legislate on them but historically in india the laws have been pretty uh, uniform and uh, as a matter of concurrent list is the uh, uh, parliament which has legislated on that and that's why you have unified laws and uh, to that extent uh, there is uh, you know uniformity amongst different personal laws and the reason why the law commission said what you just stated is that it's remarkably it's not just of course bjp wants to project it as a you know a hindu muslim issue but it's not just that there are issue of tribal laws there are issue of different communities those those communities also follow their uncodified personal laws so it after examining all those aspects the law commission in 2018 said that listen it's not feasible because there are multitude of issues and how do you bring uniformity amongst a whole different bunch of diverse group not just along lines of religion but on linguistic lines around tribal lines or on ethnicity lines and a whole range of other issues i want to make one important point though i think the issue of uniform civil code in the constitution was in 1950 please understand that in 1950 in india the uh, the personal laws of both the major religions that is hinduism and islam were uncodified and unreformed now after that in 50s during nehru's time the hindu law was reformed through uh, the uh, hindu marriage act hindu succession act etc so the idea of uniformity was that we will reform everything together but the reformation process and codification process for hindu law has already happened in the 1950s today it doesn't make any sense to have a ucc if at all you want to codify muslim personal law and reform it simultaneously you can have a muslim family law act just like you have a hindu marriage act you do it separately what it does is two things if there are elements of law which you want to reform and there there could be some minor elements here and there on succession equal rights for women in succession etc you can bring those things in polygamy for instance can be excluded anyway it's not being followed you know it's one of those things which uh, uh, the community is beaten around with that polygamy is actually on the ground very small number of muslim men practice polygamy in india but so what you can do you can reform those portions in a, a family law act and at the same time it retains the identity because like any minority group in the world muslims in india will have a sense of identity associated with personal law 
so it retains their sense of identity at the same time it reforms the problematic portion of the law and you can that's do it simply do it that's, don't a, that's a way UCT. around it you, that, that's you a really way around a having UCT. a because yeah. at yeah at the and end of the day mr interested in reform if you are genuinely interested, yeah. interested in reform as opposed to beating down the identity of a community you are going to think of ideas like this and take community into confidence and do that reformation process Be and so ucc yeah. according to me today is actually an obsolete thing it's not even needed in today's context it was in 1950s when nothing was reformed everything was personal uncodified and unreformed okay uh, uh, ashutosh in terms of the political impact of you know making the uniform civil code such a such a big highlight even amit shah talked about it you know in himachal yesterday day before yesterday uh, what is the uh, bjp's aim here is it one to to kind of uh, appeal to the hindu voters in these two states but also in a sense to see what the reaction will be ahead of the general election where this might be one of the big things floated Uh, Anubhi, I think there are three things has to be said. First of all, uh, uh, BJP and RSS have never hidden that uh, uniform civil court is one of the key uh, aspect of their Hindu agenda, along with the Dharat Hindu Satyar and Ram Mandir. Ram Mandir. Uh, but of late, uh, BJP has not been very honest with the issue, and probably they would have studied and they would realize that it's not that easy to implement this. and i i'm i'm saying this for, with with honesty for the simple reason because if you look at the 21st law commission which you have just mentioned where the law commission has very clearly clearly said in a consultation paper that it is neither necessary nor desirable and then it has it, it has insisted on that the diversity is very important and why there should be uniformity after this government has formed a law commission the 22nd law commission it's more than 3 years government has not appointed even the chairperson of this committee commission if government had been little bit interested has been little bit serious they should have gone for that so obviously when uttarakhand election happens when goa election happens and when uh, uh, gujarat election is happening so they they come out with this issue for the simple reason because they believe in that if you raise the issue probably the hindu consolidation will happen my submission is hindu consolidation will not happen because of this because people have become more uh, literate about it people have no knowledge have, have more knowledge about it and they know that if there is a uniform civil code then what will happen to the exemption under the income tax act to the uh, hindu hindi hindu unified there are other so many uh, so many other issues also so i think it's just a basically a political gimmick after the election government will forget amit shah will not repeat it again though it has been on the agenda for a very long time well after what happened with article 370 i have to say never say never uh, because a lot of people said the same thing about 370 also so i think if the rss is ideologically determined to push its agenda through anything is possible having said that pkd nambiar uh, political gimmick is how ashutosh sees it uh, shadan farasat points out you don't even need a uniform civil code you can change discriminatory practices within current uh, laws and and uh, and move on from there which is incidentally exactly what the law commission of 2018 also said that those prejudices and stereotypes within a particular religion and its personal laws should be studied and amended so why have a uniform civil code when clearly other communities and religious groups feel insecure about their identities at this point Well, Niti, I think the framers of our uh, constitution, way back in the 1950s, wanted to have a uniform civil code in this country. Uh, many courts, including the apex court of this country, multiple times have argued or suggested or recommended to have a uniform civil code. We are a progressive country. We wanted to be a be, be a, uh, a m m more progressive country in the times to come, and it is important. it is it, there is a, there is a perception and a narrative narrative which uh, ashutosh ji or the, our my earlier speaker wanted to convey in this particular debate is that it is predominantly push the hindu agenda may i put uh, a small submission to all of you that even within the hindu religion if at all if you call it as a religion there are different people like i am a person who is coming from a matrilineal uh, society wherein the wom women have more power 
or rather i my pk or in my name stands from taken from my mother's family no, name not from my father's family name so the diversity within the hindu community and each different communities do practice different kind of set of uh, interest even today within the hindu community so i think making this uniform civil code as more of like uh, to just to target the muslims is actually to create some kind of a narration and create some kind of a trouble within within india i think the, the india needs a uniform civil code because we want the constitution is the most important thing rather than a particular religion religion is always as belief of an individual or his, it's a personal thing but when it comes to a nation we need to have a uniform civil code wherein as you said in your initial remark the poor uh, the people who are affected with this different laws uh, different personal laws are the the the, the women or the girls in this country you need to understand that there are religions even today which practice child marriage i'm not talking about one religion or two religions even caste within the hindu community do practice uh, the, the girls before okay, even below even I, the 15 I, I, age i'll just get the others in on that although i have to tell you that yes there was a fierce debate in india's constituent assembly about a uniform civil code but at the end of the day they decided not to push through with it uh for reasons that we clearly see uh being outlined uh, even by the law commission in 2018 tehsin punawala you're raising your hand go ahead let me begin at the onset because the constituent assembly is continuously being referred to and i am studying and right now doing my phd in indian constitution i just want to tell your viewers that the first people who opposed the codification of the hindu laws was the jansan the the political party which today is the bjp they opposed it so the bjp trust them to turn around and do a u turn on everything that they, they stand for nothing except for lies but let's come to the issue that i've been debating because what the bjp is trying to do is trying to make this a hindu versus muslim is issue which it absolutely is not a the ucc concerns more with tribal laws there are certain issues in muslim laws if you do want to rectify it, please by all means the muslim personal law rectify it or codify it or however you want to do it for example study that is a government study says polygamy is a, is is much lesser amongst muslims than among uh, than amongst other uh, religions or other tribes of religion so why are the muslims being singled out because it becomes a beating stick for the rss and forgive me for being political because this also is a political debate now let me ask the bjp or their representatives or the sim sympathizers one question we talk about a ucc in gujarat the state from where the honorable prime minister comes there's something called a maitri karar where a man can have a consensual relationship on contract with a woman while having a wife is ucc going to end that i want to know in goa where there is ucc the bjp speaks about it do you know the hindu man can have another wife if his wife legally married wife does not give him a son beyond the age of 30 31 legally so why are you making this a hindu muslim issue if you want reforms let's look at all religions separately issues that you think are against women's rights or for child rights when you have the juvenile justice please go ahead and reform them nobody is stopping it but the fact that they want to make this a hindu muslim shows that they have no agenda and again i repeat this has less to do with any particular region this will affect more tribal rights wait before uh, i come back I to you mr nambiar i just have to get ranjana kumari's initial comments because i know you will want to jump in ranjana kumari your views on the whole women card that is played with a uniform civil code is this something that is better for be, that would benefit women in the long run or is it more complicated than that well nidhi everybody is talked about constituent assembly the all the religious uh, you know scriptures customary practices were codified and also it, there was no agreement and then it was decided that we will have all personal laws from 90s when you look through all the women's movement demands and you know whether it is national perspective plan whether it is status of women committee report whether it is you know all our individual manifestos you will see that everywhere for a long time women demanded a uniform civil code now why number one we want all the personal laws to be repealed why because they are all discriminatory against women every single personal law has some or the other provision which is discriminating against women whether it is marriage custody uh, custody of the child Inheritance. whether it is uh, yeah. you know adoption all all those issues you just showed it on your uh, channel now the thing is that when personal laws are discriminatory against women and each law cannot be reformed separately so first and the foremost thing is to repeal all personal laws because they have whether it is coming to inheritance rights of women till date 
we have even parliament passed it the and, and, and also supreme court said that you can give your inherited you cannot give share to women in your inherited property still date that's the provision i mean you can still will away your property you a father has the right to will away his property now look look and also in terms of marriage you know different religions have different kinds of practices which are all against uh, women discriminatory against women so uniform civil code is a deeper debate we need to discuss it across the religious communities and we have to come to some kind of a consensus so one religious um, you know one religion is not like, in a way uh, making others feel that they they are really imposing on them to follow whatever that particular religion so we do need to really reform the personal laws do away with them we don't need these personal laws but at the same time what this common law of the land the modern common law of the land has to be evolved and many many areas it is already there as mentioned by your advocate panelists that you know there are they we do have and even i think mr uh, just the previous um comment i heard that you know there are laws why don't two people take the uh, the those laws but it's interesting i don't you're saying so you're, for me for me you're saying important. you're saying reforming individual serious. personal laws is maybe, not going maybe, to maybe cut maybe it one half a se- one uh, five seconds more because very serious debate for us there is a divided opinion at the moment about it because everybody is fearing that imp- imposition of hindu laws will be on everybody else but i don't think that should be the thing there should be a proper debate and there should be a proper discussion we do not want personal laws that's what our shadan do you want to address that? that do you want Sorry? to address ranjana kumari there and yeah, her so concerns the, there there can be two views what ranjana ji is saying is if there is a genuinely secular ucc without any sort of you know uh, in, uh, uh, as a across the board rights uh, you know thing uh, without any imposition of a particular sections uh, rules or laws into that then that's maybe something desirable for all and women it's a it's a fact that in all personal laws women are the losers there's no dispute on that i think the what what the formulation i have suggested what it does is in the today's context there is a genuine sense of insecurity in minority groups and it's not surprising if you are daily being targeted you will be insecure about your identity even if you're not being targeted you will be insecure because you are a minority group that's why we have minority rights in the constitution so therefore what it does is it actually draws a balance between protecting the rights of say women in personal law and at the same time retaining the identity for instance i'll give you example nikah nikah is a pure contract right it's way more modern than a hindu marriage on sacrament right <laughs> that's a sacrament so it's a relatively very modern thing so that aspect there is no problem with there could be a problem with the succession because if you get one third a woman gets one third and a boy gets two third there could be a problem so that, that's the element of reform so you reform the problematic part you retain the good parts and th- that way what you do is you give security to the community as a whole and you protect those who are vulnerable within the community genuinely and that th- therefore draws a good balance between both the objectives okay uh, ashutosh that- Ash- ashutosh because i'm just coming to the last couple of minutes yeah see see uh, nidhi the fact of the matter is that the framers of the constitution also wanted dhara uh, 370 to continue but was it continued but it was exactly. removed with lot a uh, lot of pomp and show second point is i think the uh, uh, the framers of the constitution wanted ucc but when pandit jawaharlal nehru and baba saheb ambedkar wanted hindu court bill in nine, in 1951 the first uh, uh, parliament election who were the people who opposed it who were the people who burned the effigy of baba saheb ambedkar who were the people it it's a it, the bjp was not there but jansang was there rss was there and uh, so i think when it suits you it's okay the the the, the problem the the problem is that the ucc today is identified as a as a epitome of muslim appeasement because muslim do not want a uniform civil court and hindus had been given a hindu court bill so it is used as a political ploy to ident to consolidate hindu what not there is no seriousness on this i'm i'm i can i can uh, bet my neck neck on that so okay please understand this i uh, go back in history 1956 1951 1954 and identify those people those leaders and what kind of words sentences abuses they heard at nehru and ambedkar when the hindu court bill court court bill was to be passed i i i'm completely out of time today uh, uh, on this but, but i, I, I keep, see uh, this keep, issue keep popping up point. again as well, we uh, head head, head closer and closer to the gujarat election in particular tasin forgive me i'll invite you again because i i know we're going to revisit this thank you so much to all of you for joining us tonight thank you